Hi, I'm faculty editor Virginia Shank, and I'm here today with Rod Welpley, who's going to read and chat with us about Your Wife Decides on Kayaks. Your Wife Decides on Kayaks. Put in at the S curve, then she'll choose the lake or its feeder creek. You'll follow across the cove, slip with her between the banks, trees above, their arms stretched for leafy partners on the other side, like the arch of a Virginia reel, your boats a shy, untouching couple passing underneath. Soft whiffs of stillness slowly outdo the cold, wet fur odor of deeper water. Red dappled snakes wishing they were copperheads stop sunning, join you in the calm, cause wakes as wide as yours. Paradactyl herons sail the wind, angry, grokking that your paddle strokes awoke turtles they'd stalked since sunrise. This much life on this small body a moment to remind you, dying is easy. A hundred percent success in the history of us, save biblical exceptions with which you do not hold. Still you follow, though you suspect she knows the way even less than you. Faith is not a stream that never dips and shallows on the rocks. It ripples on to you, the boat ahead, the love who sits there, the buoyancy of now. Thank you so much. It's such a beautiful poem. Um, when you read it, I really thought about the, the sense of connection and longing that feels so present in the poem. Um, there's this distance between the speaker and the, the lover, the wife, um, but, but a sense of togetherness also. And then this connection to the natural items around the speaker, uh, projecting into the minds of the snakes and, and recognizing the feeling of the, the herons. And I'm wondering, was that a conscious decision for you to bring all those elements together? Or do you think that sort of naturally happened? You know, I think, it, it was mostly an accident. Uh, I, 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 not to get too much into process, but my general process is I want to write something. And, and so I think of well, what, what is pleasing to you. And, and, and the day that I started drafting this, of course, something that was pleasing to me was, um, was kayaking. Um, and, and the fact that my wife chose, you know, my wife is notoriously not an outdoors person, but, but she said, let's get some kayaks. And I thought, oh, and we've had so much fun with it. Um, but I think one of the things I really liked about the poem that I sort of discovered later was there was this tension of togetherness and apartness at the same time. Um, and and I think it was, it just figured accidentally in the image of you're kayaking together, but you're each in your own vessel. And, uh, and then you're seeing the nature that it's in its own vessel too. And you, you want to be a part of it, but you also see you're not a part of it. And for some reason, I think then the end was surprising to me too, because I didn't know, like I never expected to leap to, whatever happens at the end, which I can't even try to explain, but I, I just happened upon the, the, because I mean, our creek is so small, but there's so much life on this small body. And then that sort of leapt into this other thing about the bodies and what's going to happen to these bodies. And what does it mean to be together and apart in a body and, and, and what is that? And the only thing I guess I thought was that must be what faith is. But I, how that happened, I don't know. I mean, it certainly like the intent was never there. The intent was to write something about being on a kayak on a small creek. 
Um, the rest of it was largely discovered. Um, I, I don't know how that is, but I trust that every once in a while something like that is going to happen and I'm going to be happy about it. Um, and, and this was one of the ones that was. Um, I think what I like about it is it's really kind of a simple little thing. It doesn't demand a lot of work on the part of the reader, um, but I think it might be inviting to the reader if they will, if he or she wants to think about it anyway. Um, I think it's suggestive in some ways. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it was really interesting how you said you sort of discover the end of the poem. And I think that's what all of us as poets are always trying to do is, is start with something, mm -hmm. right, specific and concrete and get somewhere else and and I think this poem really takes us on that journey and I I think about the way that we chose this poem before COVID you know it wasn't even a thought in our heads at that point that we would be thinking about something like this but it it really feels appropriate for this time that sense of togetherness and apartness and faith and what happens to the body all of those concerns feel so true to the moment um, do you think the poem feels different to you now than it did when you composed it, or? I, I think so. Um, I mean, for me, there's always that step back after I've written something, and I don't like to do it too soon, where you sort of say, okay, so here's all this suggestive stuff, now do I jump in and try to make it, you know, and so I, I didn't really think, I have to say, I didn't think of all of that when I sent it. I just looked at it and I thought, well, this, this is pleasing to me for some reason, and I don't really know why. Um, but I think shaded by COVID, I think all of that somehow gets more pronounced. Um, it certainly does for me when I read it. Uh, when I when I read it now, as opposed to when I wrote it, I just think, oh, this is this is about us together and apart, um, which I, I have to say I really never thought of until after COVID. And I'm looking at it and I said, you know, after a while it seems obvious. I mean, you're in a, a boat that only holds one person. And you say, well, let's go kayaking together, but you're not together. You're in the same space. You're trusting that you're on the same journey. But when I'm kayaking and I see that heron and I think it looks like a pterodactyl, does my wife think it's like a pterodactyl? Are we having that same journey? Well, the faith is that maybe we are. Uh, maybe it's a fiction. Um, I don't know, but the idea that I think there's that longing for togetherness, even though we're apart. And I think I, 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 I have to say, I do really like the tension of that. I think, you know, otherwise it's a nice little pastoral poem about this is what happens when you kayak. And, but I think the together and apart is the tension that maybe makes it a little bit more worth thinking about. Um, now you mentioned earlier, you're not crazy about talking your process. You told us a little bit about the process of this poem, um, but we, since we work so often with students, we often ask, do you have advice or writing advice or um, would you like to talk a little bit about your process in general so that the students can kind of understand what it's like to take the poem from point A to point B? Uh, yeah, sure, I, I can do that. Um, the beauty of, I think, getting to be me that has a job outside of, outside of a university where, you know, I go to work at, at, a, at a, an electric company. Nobody knows that I write poems, they, I, they, and they wouldn't care. I mean, it, it's just like the guy down the hall, you know, plays golf. Another guy runs marathons. I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I write poems for a couple hours and they fail. But you know what, I have fun doing it. Um, and so I guess 
the the thing that I can say is you, you got to show up for the page and know you're going to fail most of the time and that's going to be okay because you're going to have the experience. I mean, the other thing on that I think I'd, I'd say to people is just trust the next line um, because your mind works in, in ways that you don't understand, but you don't have to. So for example, when I wrote the line um, about this small body, I meant the body of water. And I probably wrote on this small body of water and then probably crossed out water um, because it was obvious for one thing, but for another thing, it suggested, that was the point where it suggested there could be uh, more to open up. So, I mean, when you can make a, a word do uh, double work for you, so, you know, it's the body of water, sure, but it's your body, your wife's body, the body of the hair and the body of well, we suggest the body of Christ in there too. Um, and, and, and just let those words open up and free associate on, um, on the suggestive word, um, which is much easier to do at four in the morning when your editorial governor is off. I mean, you're, you'd rather be sleeping. So you're still in that sleeping mode. Yeah, I, I definitely suggest right when you're tired um, and you'd really rather be sleeping. Um, that that's helpful because you're not beating yourself up for you know yeah you know, not being robert frost or whoever you want to be that morning i mean you're just too tired to care is there anything else you want to add any projects you want to tell us about oh uh, i i i got a, a chat book coming out in the spring um it's called, uh, what is it called? It's called The Last Bridge is Home, um, which is based on, I, I grew up in, in Ashtabula County, which has the most covered bridges of any county in all of the United States. And when we were little kids, my twin brother and I would have my father drive us all around the county. And my father, who was a factory worker, and I think he read he read one book after he graduated high school in 1948. It was called Good Infield Play by Lou Boudreau. And so we could, we could turn the double play because that, that was our nighttime book from my dad. But he would accidentally say such beautiful things. And we'd say, one more bridge, one more bridge, dad. And he'd always look at us, he'd say, the last bridge is home. And I thought, oh, someday I'm gonna write a book called The Last Bridge is Home. And so this is, this is my, my, my idea for my twin brother and my father who never really had a great relationship to try to make that last bridge home for them. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it might be terribly introspective or something like that, but I'm happy you know, with that it's coming out. Um, this, this poem will be part of that, um, that collection. So uh, I'm glad to, to to see it, you know, get a double life that way.